If you've been following my content over the last league, you'll know that Wanders got relatively popular in 3.23. I made my version of the build using Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation that used like the Helmetless tech as well as the Thunderfist gloves. People like Palstron made Strength Stackers. There was a guy who made a video for Int Stack Trickster. I don't remember their name, unfortunately. But with the addition of some of these new wand gems and a couple other things, Wanders have kind of been on the up and up. Unfortunately, GGG decided that uh, maybe Wanders were having a little bit too much fun, and they decided to, uh, well, for example, under Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, my version of the build lost over 80% of its damage. I was honestly pretty surprised that they nerfed it that hard, realistically, but, I mean, it is what it is at this point. If you don't know what happened to Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, they removed the, like, extra high-level exponential scaling that you get with spell damage, so that just simply doesn't exist anymore. And they have also changed the attack damage base, the effectiveness of added damage. They gave it some more projectile changing directions, but honestly, this means almost nothing to any version of the build that I cared about. This really is only useful for clearing with Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, which... I think it's a bad clear ability anyways. Without like very expensive gems like Awakened Fork and stuff like that, it just simply isn't really a clear ability. It's just kind of bad in general. Now, the reason that this ability lost so much of its damage is because the Sniper's Mark nerf hit this ability far harder than it did most other ones. I would probably say that this ability in particular, as well as Splitting Steel, most likely were the two abilities that got Sniper's Mark nerfed, if I'm going to be honest with you. Because if you don't know what happened with Sniper's Mark, it lost 6% damage taken from projectile hits, as well as three, as far as I can tell, additional split targets. Best case scenario, at level 21, the new Sniper's Mark will give us three split targets. However, I doubt that that's even the case. Previously, when you level it to 21, it gave you five additional targets, so there is a small chance, but I highly doubt it. This, plus losing Berserk because of Tinctures, plus the overall nerf, to Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation just made it lose most of its damage realistically. Another thing that's not too great about Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation is that realistically, it doesn't synergize super well with the new Wisp support, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Because from what I saw in the preview videos from the new uh, expansion, is that it kind of seems to be on like a slight delay to wherever your character is standing. It's already pretty hard to properly position for Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation to get the big overlaps. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, this is my video if you didn't manage to see it from this league what you have to do with kinetic bolt of fragmentation is you have to basically stand inside of the enemy and you'll notice that when i get it if you watch there at first i'm not positioned properly right we'll actually play this at lower speed now if you watch this whenever this loads up you'll notice i'm not hitting it properly at first so at the very beginning i'm standing in the wrong spot here and you notice only a few projectiles but then when i get it correct the entire screen just explodes with projectiles. The problem with the new Wisp support is realistically for this new support that we've got up here at the top, you're just not gonna be able to get those overlaps and it's probably just not going to be that great for the gym in general. So in my opinion, Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation probably will still see some play at the very super duper high end, but I just don't know that the investment is realistically worth it uh, over some other options that we might have. As a side note, if you're enjoying this content, you like these style of videos, make sure to give this video a like. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest videos that I'll be putting out for the new league. Next thing we'll be talking about is the new Kinetic Blast of Cluster. I was kind of waiting for this new um, transfigured gen that they were going to be putting out about Kinetic Blast. I'll be quite honest with you, I think this is kind of trash. The only way that this could maybe be good is if this new wording that you see on Kinetic Blast where it says, fires a projectile from a wand that causes a series of area explosions in a secondary radius around its point of impact, each damaging enemies. You'll notice on the normal Kinetic Blast here that they also updated this text as well. Because if you look at the old wording here, it says fires a projectile from a wand that causes a series of small explosions surrounding its point of impact, each damaging enemy is caught in the area. There is a slight change of words here. I highly doubt this changes anything. I I'm talking like a one in a hundred chance that this does anything mechanically different. But if it does, then maybe, potentially, the new Kinetic Blast of Clustering could be okay. But honestly, it doesn't really matter how 
much added damage or how powerful a skill can be if it just doesn't mechanically work very well. And you see the line on it that says deals added physical damage equal to 15% of maximum mana. That's nice and all. If you had 10,000 mana, you know, you're getting 1,500 added physical damage, which is huge. That's a ton. But if realistically this ability just can't hit that many times, or it can't overlap properly, or it just can't clear, it might just not be good. But this is something we have to test. We have to see how it feels in game. And as of right now, my gut instinct is that it's just not very good. Now, a couple of things about this ability is that additional projectiles instead cause additional explosions. So normally with Kinetic Blast, additional projectiles cause you to have additional projectiles, and each of those can cause up to five explosions. This one just makes more explosion with one projectile, meaning that you can't really get good overlaps with it. You can't really cause, you know, like if you're hitting two or three enemies, you're not going to be able to get two or three sets of explosions happening. You will get extra base damage because of the mana and the explosion radius is a little bit bigger. But honestly, I can't, I just can't really see it being better. Now, one thing that is pretty unique about this gym is that it is scaling mana as physical damage. Typically, whenever you're scaling mana for damage, they force it to be lightning. This is physical. What that means is that you can use it for poison, and it also means that you can use it for like gaining fizz as whatever, or converting it into cold, meaning hatred scaling will work here. And it is a relatively easy way to get a good giant base of fizz damage that you can then convert into whatever you'd like. The problem here, once again, as I said previously, is that mechanically this skill looks bad. So no matter how much base damage you throw on it, it probably won't be that great if just the mechanics behind the skill are not that good. Now, another line down here in the bottom is says projectiles cannot split. So I think, and judging by what uh, the devs at GGG have said, is that they are kind of afraid of wand builds at this point because of what strain they put on the servers. If you saw in my video that I made here in the last league, there's a lot of the time where when all of these projectiles are going, I'm, I'm lagging. The game right like it is chugging to a halt you can imagine if there's hundreds or even thousands of people who are doing this especially if they're doing it in like maps i think i have some map clearing here yeah so especially if they're going into maps let's um let's go towards the beginning because i think that's where i kill a bunch of stuff i've still got my very long beard here but yeah like the game can just slow to a halt sometimes when you get in these really big giant groups especially if there's like enemies can't die or things like that this character at this point is doing so much damage that I'm one-shotting most things, but you can kind of see when stuff lives, the game kind of chugs a little bit. So it does feel like they're kind of afraid of projectiles splitting and returning and doing all that kind of extra stuff, so they've prevented it from doing that. Now, this should work like normal Kinetic Blast in the sense that if you chain, fork, return, pierce, whatever, it should give you another set of explosions. But not being able to have additional projectiles, once again, just kind of doesn't make this very good in my opinion. And last thing is that it has much larger primary and secondary AoE than the normal Kinetic Blast. So this means a larger area over which it can cover with those projectiles, but that also means that those projectiles are moving further out as well, even if the projectiles inside are getting larger. Overall, I give the new Kinetic Blast a very low chance of being good, but there is some potential there depending on how it goes. Now, as for Old Kinetic Blast, I do think that Old Kinetic Blast is probably the best clear gem by leaps and bounds, save maybe one that we'll talk about in a moment. It is just the most effective clear wand ability that really exists in the game. In my opinion, Power Siphon is kind of bad. The new changes that they've done to Power Siphon really just make it a mediocre clear ability in comparison to Kinetic Blast. I don't know why you'd ever play it. Previously, Power Siphon used to be the single target ability, but with what they've done to it, honestly, I just think it's kind of bad if I'm going to be real with you. Now, as I said before, the new wording on the gym gives us a very small chance that they might have mechanically changed it because right now, as far as I'm aware, Kinetic Blast can only hit with one projectile and one AoE on each target per projectile that hits an enemy. I'll test this, but don't expect anything to change. Highly think this is just modernizing the language language that they're using on the ability. Because if we go in game here on this character, I will just go ahead and hit a wall here, right? So you can see for each projectile that hits a wall, it's making a series of explosions. If you are hitting a single target, only one projectile can hit it. However, if there is say like three targets all standing next to each other right here, and all three of those projectiles each hit a target, 
they can overlap on all of those targets. So each enemy can potentially get hit by up to three AOEs instead of just one. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to shotgun a little bit if you are getting an enemy up against the wall or you have other enemies nearby them, meaning things like Tornado as well as Hydrosphere or maybe things like Vol Breach could be potentially pretty good if we're using this as just a main map clear ability because we're probably gonna need a little bit of help to finish off bosses at the end of maps. But realistically, uh, the build that I played last league when it comes to specifically Kinetic Blast, besides the loss of Berserk should be fundamentally unchanged, meaning that clear should be about the same as it always was, which was very, very good before. It's just that single target damage that we have to worry a little bit about, but we'll see how that goes because most likely having a four, five or six link on just specifically Kinetic Blast, as well as the new Wisp Gem that we'll talk about in a little bit, might give us just enough damage to make it work. Already kind of talked about this, but we're gonna need to find clever ways to make use of our cleave damage. We'll see how that goes. Now let's talk about the new gem that could potentially be extremely good. And that's going to be Elemental Hit of the Spectrum. So typically with Elemental Hit, it chooses one of a variety of different kinds of damage and focuses on that. However, this does all types of damage. And when it hits, it does an AOE around the target that it hits for damage as well, which I'm assuming does the same exact damage as the base damage. On top of this, it has a huge chance to free shock and ignite, which is okay. It's not really super useful. If you're critting, you're doing those things anyways. It deals no non-elemental damage, meaning that you can't stack any physical damage here and you cannot scale any chaos damage in any way here. And then this last line that it shows says 15% more damage per elemental ailment on the enemy. This last line is what's interesting here because this should scale extremely well with things like Secrets of Suffering and Skitterbots, or you could skip the Secrets of Suffering completely and just go for the three normal ailments, Ignite, Shock, Chill, and maybe even Freeze. But you can also pair this with the new uh, Yoke of Suffering that got updated to have 10% increased damage taken by enemies, which will make it so that you can add in Poison and Bleed. Also, if you don't go Secrets of Suffering and just go Yoke and normal ailments, you could get quite a bit of shock going because all of your damage will be able to shock with yoke. So you could just get a couple like chance to bleed on attack tattoos and just a little bit of poison chance. And you could potentially have a lot of damage with this skill and scale a whole bunch of just more multipliers on top of the already good base damage. Now, one of the reasons that I think that this might be interesting is that this should scale extremely well with Piscators. One big problem that wand builds have in comparison to bow builds, especially early league, is that they really suffer from the fact that it is just so hard to craft a Ellie attack damage wand. Bows don't have all of those extra stats to deal with, all of the caster mods, as well as all of the attack mods, just make it unreasonable to be able to get the proper mods on a wand. Whereas with bows, the reason that those builds are so good on League Start is because you can just find a random bow on the ground, it'll have like 700 LED DPS, and you just pick it up, use it, and go. Maybe craft something on the bench, and you have a weapon that can take you through most of the game. Wands just don't have this. There are so many spell oriented mods that it just makes it unreasonable to ever actually find any kind of good like Ellie attack damage wand. Reasonably, I think that GGG should do the same thing to wands that they did to daggers before where they made daggers and rune daggers. I think there should be generic wands and then I think there should be attack based wands that can't roll all of those spell mods. That might fix something, but who knows? Now, as I said before, this should work like Kinetic Blast in that every time that you pierce, chain, fork, or return or anything like that, it should give you another explosion. So could be a pretty good clear ability. We'll see. This is something I'll work on when we get a little bit further into the league and I can actually test some of the mechanisms behind this because there's a chance that none of this works the way that it's supposed to, but we'll see when we get into the league. Now, let's talk about Sacred Wisps. I think quite a few people are misunderstanding how this gym works and... There didn't really seem to be a lot of hype behind it, but I do think it's a relatively decent gym. So what this gym does is that whenever you do hit an enemy, you can spawn two wisps that have a chance to proc your normal attack that you spawn to them with. So what this means is that those two wisps deal about half of your damage each, meaning that overall you're getting about double the amount of damage through two additional attacks. However, if you read down towards the bottom, it's the sacred wisps have 25% chance to use the triggering skills when you fire a projectile with that skill, 
and then they also have an additional 25% chance when you fire projectile with that skill while a rare or unique enemy is in your presence. The line in your presence is important here because as far as I'm aware, that means it's 80 units which is about 95% of the screen that you can see. So while clearing, as long as there is a rare on your screen, as long as there is a unique mob on your screen, this should have a 50% chance to proc, which means that most of the time, this should be roughly a 50% damage multiplier, which is pretty above average when it comes to damage multipliers just for support gems. And any other time it would be 25, which is slightly below average. So this should scale extremely well with things that like to hit large amounts of times because you're essentially going to have a 25 to 50% chance for two additional whole attacks to happen. Meaning that this is somewhat similar to like Mirage Archer that you would get from bows. It should be a relatively good support gem. I think it will be used on any skill that has an overwhelming amount of clear, but maybe lacks a little bit a single target. We'll see. I'll test it out, of course, but I'm not expecting a ton from this because, it, as I said previously, it does seem like GG is not really a fan of wands. And one other thing here is that this potentially has positive interactions with Barrage, but it will need to be tested. This is something that Tuna brought up on Twitter and the post underneath it, because what it says is that Sacred Wisps have a 25% chance to use the triggering skill when you fire a projectile with that skill. And if you read the Barrage text, Barrage makes you fire projectiles sequentially. If you have, say, six projectiles and it triggers on every single one of those projectiles, that means that you could be getting a full set of barrages every single time. Now, typically barrage can't be triggered is the problem with it. However, this ability says this skill is triggered by supported skills to summon sacred wisps, which use the triggered skill when you do. The wisps themselves, from what I can read here, are going to be using the same skill, but not triggering it, which potentially means for single target that barrage should synergize positively with this. This is something I'll test when we get into the league, but I'm not expecting it to work because that'll probably be relatively broken. So now that I've gone over pretty much all of the changes and stuff that are happening and gone in depth on any of the different abilities, if you're curious about those, let's talk about some possible build archetypes that you could play as wands going into the next league. Now, I want to preface all of this by saying you should not league start as any of these abilities, okay? When I say that, I mean that you should not be entering the league and trying to equip a wand on your character and level through the campaign with a wand. Absolutely not. There's no reason to do that. It's going to be horrible. However, it does just so happen that a couple of these archetypes are very, very similar to bow setups on the same ascendancy with a lot of the same gear, a lot of the same points taken on the passive tree. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to start with a bow character, level up to probably red maps, maybe get your first two watchstones and things like that, and then transition into this on like late day one, maybe day two or even day three. That seems relatively reasonable because of how close these builds are. Now, whether or not that's worth it, that's something that I'm gonna be testing in the first couple of days in the league. I don't suggest that you try to go off of what I'm going to do because I don't know that it's going to work realistically. But let's go over some of the archetypes. So the Helmetless Lightning Based Deadeye. This is the version that I played this league. This was a super powerful build, but Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation got nerfed extremely heavily. Kinetic Blast still works functionally exactly the same as it was before. This is most likely gonna be my early choice. I'm gonna try swapping into this, doing a bunch of map farming, seeing how it goes. It will be relatively simple to go from Lightning Arrow on a Deadeye, into this build relatively straightforward. There shouldn't be a ton of changes realistically needed, so probably my play. Next on the list is gonna be an Int Stack Trickster Deadeye. This is a extremely high-end build that got pretty popular. However, the like cost to effectiveness ratio with the massive nerfs that happened to Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, I can't really say that this is gonna be a great version of the build to play. It'll still be very strong, especially at the high end for sure. The cost effectiveness ratio has possibly gone down. This is the same exact situation with the strength stack version of it. Cost effectiveness ratio, probably not that great compared to playing something else at this point. Then there's gonna be a standard elemental projectile Deadeye. This is the same base that pretty much any build that's been playing a bow Deadeye has been using for, I don't know, leagues and leagues and leagues now where you essentially just take any elemental ability that's halfway decent, scale it as a projectile Deadeye, shoot things really far, do a ton of damage, pretty basic, pretty solved at this point. This has really good potential with the new elemental hit. 
as wanders kind of struggle like i was telling you before with getting that base level of damage like getting a elemental weapon with like fire lightning and cold on it is almost impossible for a wander so with a new elemental hit and maybe a piscator's which is the same weapon that i'm using in game here this does no physical damage it has no base damage but it's got really good attack speed it's got really good crit has really good accuracy and it has damage with weapons penetrates elemental resistances and attacks with this weapon have 115 percent increased elemental damage all of those stats are really 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 good if you have a large elemental base to work off of. This ability has a relatively large elemental base to work off of, and it should be even more than that when you scale it with gem levels. Elemental hit typically scales insanely well with gem levels, could be pretty powerful, especially if you're stacking with extra um, ailments and stuff like that with yoke and all that kind of good stuff. Could, could be pretty insane, potentially. Next is gonna be a mana-based Ballista Hierophant. There were a couple people that played this with um, the new Power Siphon of the Archmage, I personally think this is kind of mediocre, but maybe if the new Kinetic Blast works relatively well, this could work, but I don't think this is a great means of playing that kind of build. I do think there is potential for a poison-based Pathfinder using the same exact mechanic with the new Kinetic Blast. If it can overlap relatively well, and you can scale up a bunch of just base fizz damage, could be halfway decent for a poison character. If the new Kinetic Blast is actually good because they fundamentally changed the mechanics, or if it's terrible because, you know, they decided to not do anything and just make a bad gym. And that's going to be it for the video. Look forward to some content probably in the first couple of days of the league, talking about swapping into a Kinetic Blast build, how my experience with that went, because in all good conscience, in, in reality, I can't recommend you or make a League Start Guide for this because I don't know that it's going to work super well. You can play basically any Lightning Arrow Deadeye build. The one that I played from last League is probably fine as a starter. There's almost no changes realistically that's going to happen to it. I'll probably update a POB and maybe make a video here in the next day or two just to give you guys something if you want my take on how to start with Lightning Arrow. The TLDR though is it's probably going to use a lot of Havoc's leveling because he tends to update that kind of stuff and probably most of the same endgame stuff that it always has because that archetype hasn't fundamentally changed in leagues and leagues now at this point. So make sure to look forward to that. I have hopes that Wanders can still be pretty decent but uh, it's one of those things where there's so many changes all happening at the same time we're just gonna have to see. So remember boys, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.